Hi, I'm Maud Mosley. My pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a weekly series where I sit down with queer 2SLGBTQ plus bands and musicians to talk to them about their music, their experiences, and much, much more. Today, I am here with an incredible artist from Washington, indie pop artist left at London. It's such a pleasure having you here. Would you like to say a little bit about yourself? Hi. Uh... I, I'm, I'm Nat Puff, left at London, she, her. Uh, right now, if you're wondering why the angle is so weird, it's because that number one, I am in my bed. Number two, there's a cat in this bed. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's Timmy, though. I didn't want to leave him alone uh, for selfish reasons. I like petting him. I absolutely love that. And I hey. really want to start off with talking about your music right away. Um, and because recently you've been releasing music with Holiday Kiss as the group Wow OK. And the yeah. two of you share a lot of similar identities. For instance, you and Holiday Kiss both speak publicly about being autistic and plural. Do you feel as though having those similarities improves what you're able to create together? Honestly, we just vibe. If if uh, if anything uh, diagnostically is like similar between us, then I haven't noticed it affecting or like I haven't noticed it affecting our interactions positively or negatively. We just vibe, and that's 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 all I'm looking for in a collaborator. Tbh, just vibes. That is very fair. Would you like to share a little bit more just about Wow Okay and how it came together? Yeah, so Wow OK is a project with me and Holiday Kiss Robin, um, and um, we met because I, I talked about this on Twitter as of uh, the day that we we're shooting this, May seventeenth. On, uh, but like on Twitter, I was talking about like somebody made a shit post about like wanting there to be like a lesbian Brockhampton. So I set up an open call, essentially, to be like, hey, who wants to be in this? Because I was like, kind of like down for it. And Robin was one of the first people that like really stood out to me that like responded. And we like immediately hit it off. Uh, they sent me a, um, they sent me an instrumental that ended up being the song that has yet to be fully released called we should hang out and uh oh my god what are you doing sorry i'm looking at the cat right now uh it's just absolutely vibing <laughs> vibing right now but yeah so we worked on we should hang out and then we worked on uh day long street next um and that was a song that was like that like evolved over the years like we released like a um a version of it recently at jesus christ this is, let me sit up <laughs> it's a very unattractive angle hold on let me see here there we go i put my phone down flip it and reverse it all right so anyways um Robin and I, we made De Long Street, which is another track that we've um, released uh, thus far only as a part of a SoundCloud pack of songs we've done. We want to do an album soon, but um, De Long Street was the second song that we made. Um, it's based off of this old remix of Ginger that they made, the song Ginger by Brockhampton. Uh, I was like, that synth's cool. Can we use that synth for something? and like those drums or something and they were like yeah sure so i sent them like a chord progression that i made over like like i was at i was in san francisco so i didn't have any access to my daw so i had to like me not being able to play piano i had to like practice this like chord progression um and then like this little melody over the top of it that's like do, 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 do. you know that little thing and uh then um robin just Put all that stuff in sent me the stems and then i 
like mess with the stems like what two years later or some ridiculous shit um and uh no it was it was one year later yeah because it was like mid 2020 um but then we just uh wrote lyrics to it and i had and i had the chorus like the i'm so alone tell me who to be today that whole section um written while i was in another part of san francisco um like i like essentially this whole song was made while i was on tour with pop-up magazine um, until like I got to come back home and finish the rest of the instrumental and stuff like that. Very good stuff. Yeah, it's uh, great to. Oh, sorry. No, oh, no, I was done. Oh, it's it's great to hear how that came together, and I'm really excited that there's more coming with that project. I can't wait to check that out. But in the meantime, I want to talk a little bit about your solo music. So in your solo music. You know, you speak to your identities a lot, as well as other personal experiences. And, you know, you continue to bring those honest and vulnerable feelings to the forefront of your music, you know, continuing to do so in your 2020 EP, notably uh, with one song I can think of, which is My Friends Are Kind of Strange. And when you write about these, like, personal experiences, do you ever worry that listeners will misconstrue your lyrics? And if so, how do you handle that? I go about art knowing that my audience will likely misunderstand it. Um, so I try to make it as either as vague as possible to like let the interpretation be so wildly askew that like there's like no way that people can interpret it correctly or I just be blunt and like I be as straightforward about it as possible because that like the audience doesn't have the context of my life that I have when I write the song so I try to keep that in mind whenever I write and with my friends are kind of strange I feel like I um I tried to sort of mix the two um and um, the fact that anybody has been like able to determine how like purposefully plural that song was made to be is really is really good because it's like like okay great you 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 understand the song you understand me a little bit better um, and people will still misunderstand uh, that's likely to happen but like i don't know death of the author is a thing for the reason for death of the author is a thing for a reason you know um so i try to keep that in mind uh to uh not die as an author without a fight you know absolutely did it take you a while to get to that point or have you always had those same feelings when it came to making music well, I never always made music for an audience, like knowing that I had an audience, um, which is why once I started having an audience, my lyrics became a lot more concise and interpretable. Um, like if you hear any of the, like I uploaded a bunch of like demos that I did in high school uh, to Bandcamp Fridays ago. Um, and if you listen to those lyrics, you'll definitely like, Wait, shit, what was I saying? Uh, you were talking about the uh, high school demos you released and comparing the lyrics of them to what you write now, I believe. Yes, yes. Um, it's like um, the lyrics of those changed, like the style of lyricism changed, like once I started getting an audience, like, like a lot of the Purple Heart EP was written in high school, so I don't really count that as being like, post fame whatever I, I really count translator street legend volume one as being like my technical first release um even though that like it's not uh but 
now I got this debut album coming out and I really think that it's like an amalgamation of kind of both eras weirdly enough um I feel like like track six specifically really reaches this like sweet spot where it's just like all aspects of me and my songwriting style in like one track and like like the like the past the present and the future and that's why I'm like particularly excited for track six to come out of this new project. I love that. And I'm definitely excited for that too. But I also love that you brought up those high school demos because I did really want to talk about them because I think that's so cool. And I think that's something a lot of people would be absolutely terrified to do. You know, lots of people think about what they were writing and what they were creating in high school. And lots of people are really like have a lot of shame or embarrassment around their like past art. Um, but what inspired you to do that? And did you still have those like feelings of shame or embarrassment that other people do? Or did you have other feelings about it? Honestly, and I'm going to be blunt here, 90% of the reason why I uploaded those, those shits is just because it, like, I needed the money. I, <laughs> I was just like, Bandcamp Friday's coming up. Some people already know about these things. Might as well just, here you go. Here you go, my children, you know? It, it was a... It, it was not a hard decision to make after that point. <laughs> yeah, that is very fair, particularly in this world where there's like, you know, hasn't been any touring or anything. It's so understandable to just make that decision. Um, what did you think of the reception to releasing those demos was? Honestly, it was really funny because it's like, I didn't really get that much like, like hype around it like I wasn't looking for hype around like me releasing my demo tapes but um the people who were the most excited were like like some of my stands who somehow found those prior to me deleting them off the internet for like a solid chunk of time and they were like oh finally I can buy these and I'm like when did you know about these <laughs> like I was I was I was very I was very like, how? How did this happen? I still don't know. Yeah, the well, internet. Like, as far as I know, I, as far as I remember, I think one of them was like, I won't tell you my secrets. And I'm like, that scares me. <laughs> yeah, the internet is incredibly strange like that. Um, for sure. But, yeah, the, thank you so much for being here. If you want to check out any of the music we've been talking about today, which I definitely recommend you do so, please head to any of the links down below. As of the release of this video too, her debut album will be out. That was briefly just mentioned. So definitely be on the lookout for that as well. Thank you again for joining me and stay tuned for next week's Tunes Tuesday. Left at London will be playing us out. All that I have left Pills and good advice